I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you spending some time with us today. If you were with us last time, we interviewed or were interviewing Renee Storms. And if you got the same sense that I did, that we just didn't quite get everything that there was to share, uh, you'll be happy to know that she's returned and is, has come back and is going to share more of her story. For those of you that may not have heard the first episode, maybe, uh, Renee, you could, we could summarize maybe in a few minutes where, where you've been and what you've been doing. You weren't born in the church. I was not. In fact, you were even a bartender at age nine. I remember you ten. saying a ten, a ten. ten, starting me even younger than I was, <laughs> <laughs> and traveled around as an army brat. And, yes, uh, and then folks weren't LDS. You weren't LDS no. or anything. No, no. Um, actually, um, I was married. My husband invited the missionaries uh, to our home because his brother was a Mormon, and he wanted to get to know his brother better okay. through religion. They were both in the army and um, stationed on opposite sides of the world, mm -hmm. and. I joined and he didn't. Okay. So um, <clears throat> I talked a little bit about my uh, conversion to Mormonism with the, uh, was a, a spiritual experience. Um, when reading the Book of Mormon. When reading yeah. the Book of Mormon and praying about it. And then um, um, as time went on, there were many times through my journey, I was in the church all of 30 years total. And uh, during that time, there were times that I would have questions or concerns or something would bother me about the church. And I would always go back to, but God told me this was his church. And I would hang on kind to that. An and and I couldn't let go. And, and when I spoke to bishops about it, they would say, tell me how you became a Mormon. And, and they would encourage me to hang on to that spiritual yeah, testimony. Those good feelings. And that know that had. God was going to work it out in the end. Yeah. And just trust that, that he would work that out in the next life whatever those concerns or, or worries were. I didn't need to worry now. I yeah. knew the church was true. Yeah. And so <clears throat> I held on to that all those years. Yeah. And uh, Now, you were d during those 30 years, mm -hmm. you went through the temple. I did. And you uh, <clears throat> held many callings. Yes. Relief Society presidency. and A Relief Society and primary presidency, and, and I was young women's, women's president. president and uh, Sunday served school teacher. Teachers and, and, yeah. and librarian and singles rep because I ended up getting divorced. So you had and, plenty of opportunities to yes. share your testimony. Testimony? Did you do that often? Often. Were you? A yes. Testimony giver. <laughs> yes, and I was a stake missionary at one point. Oh, were you? Yes. <laughs> so you're out knocking doors, or at least visiting. Visiting with, um, and, yeah, when the missionaries and, did splits and, and things. And, and went out with the full-time missionaries. Yes. Yes. Oh, interesting. It's funny how our journeys all kind of uh, go through these processes. Yes. And then you have an experience in 1999. Tell us yes. about that. My daughter passed away in 1999. She was my. Uh, third child, oldest daughter, and she passed away. And for a couple of years, I held on to the Mormon beliefs. Um, and then, and she went to the temple a week before she passed away as well. And she, knowing that she was ill? Terminal, oh, okay. mm -hmm, because she was terminal. Um, the, the bishop encouraged her to go ahead and go through the temple. Well, I remember you'd say, you're saying that something about families are forever, that that was kind yes. of a in the back of your mind at least. As a single mom with four kids, and my husband never joined, so there was no priesthood in our home, yeah. kids were not sealed to me. And so as I, every time, every Sunday when we sang, 
what was it? Families, families are can forever. Be together forever. Yeah, <laughs> families are forever. I would cry. It was it was just heartbreaking to me because we didn't have that. Did your children notice that, or did yes. you ever talk about that? We did. Did you? We did. And what did you think the answer to that was? Because there's other Heavenly Father will take care of it. After. Many single sisters or mm -hmm. even brothers that. Uh, Heavenly Father will take care of it after. He'll During take care the of it millennium in the next, or something. Sometime or? after I die, yeah. he'll figure it out. He's gonna. He's in charge, and he'll figure it out. Now, what about family that might come after you and and have your husband sealed to you, and here you've divorced, and mm -hmm. you know, I, I kind of wonder about that myself. My wife and I have left the church. Yes. And so I'm wondering, once we pass away, a few generations from now, they'll probably go in and do our baptisms for us. And I would assume us. that that's going to happen, but since it's all fake, I don't really care anymore. Well, true, but, but during the time <laughs> yes. you went through that, during I guess the time you I went just through it. figure the Lord was going to work it out. Yes. And, and, uh, yes. One of the things I loved to do when I went to the temple was ceilings. I, I would was get involved in marriage ceilings as much as I could. Anytime the Dallas Temple was doing them, that was what I opted to do because I didn't think I'd ever have the opportunity as Renee to do those things. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah, so I did that a lot. But that was a concern and that was a problem. So yeah. about two years after my daughter Lori passed away, I began to look at that and think, I don't want to be sealed to this man who had abused my daughters and myself. Mm. I didn't want to be sealed uh, and I didn't want her sealed to him. Sure. And so that began to be a concern. And I um, went back and I started looking at all of the concerns I'd had over the course of 30 years. Every time I questioned, what about racism? What about polygamy? Anything I'd ever questioned, I began to research and look a little deeper. Oh. And so as I went That's back... That's not usual, is it? I mean, not <clears throat> most I, LDS don't really spend much time the, studying stuff. No, yeah. no. The LDS don't. It's when we start coming out, we start going, I should have been looking at this. Yeah, where did, how did I miss <laughs> all this? Yeah. That was exactly yeah. it. Where was I? Yeah. It, it's like I was asleep for 30 years. Yeah. My brain was not engaged. And I do a lot of, I'm very logical and I do a lot of critical thinking in other areas of my life. Sure. But somehow I didn't <laughs> in that area, and it, it still drives me crazy today. But yeah. that's what I started to do. So I started to do the research and look at those issues, and every one was like another nail in the coffin. And That's what I felt, too. Every, and there goes another one, yeah. and then there's another one, and there's another one. But I still had that spiritual experience kind of nagging in the back of my mind. But God told you this was his church. So how do LDS or Mormons get this? I mean, they have these feelings. They've mm -hmm. either had some kind of a spiritual experience. How, do, how have you uh, dealt with that? Well, um, I, I mentioned it last time, and I don't know, um, for those who maybe didn't see last time, um, I was actually in counseling, and the counselor asked me about my story, and as I shared with him, one of the things he asked me was if it was a physical feeling. Um, oh, there was a hug involved I'm in my. Yeah, up that it was it a um, a an emotional thing or was it physical? And as I thought about it, it was a physical feeling. As I knelt and prayed, I felt arms around me and I felt a grip on my arms. And um, now I. For those who didn't see it, there was a blanket and I was warm and loved and I just, all of this just flowing through me and that physical hug was huge. And so I, uh, I hate getting old, I lost my train of thought, but it was a physical thing, not an emotional, not an emotional thing. Yeah. And so he said, um, he said the Holy Spirit would never be physical. Oh. And so at that point, after that, it was shortly after that, I came across two verses in the Bible um, that have helped me with that. And remind me, we wrote them down. Yes, yeah, 2 Corinthians, Corinthians 11, 14 and Jeremiah 17, 9. Right. 2 Corinthians 11, um, it talks about the enemy disguises himself as light. And that is what I feel like happened in, when I prayed about the Book of Mormon, mm -hmm. that it was the enemy disguising himself as light. Yeah. And then uh, Jeremiah 17, no. um, 17, 9, and that's the one that talks about the heart. The heart, the heart is deceitful above all else, yeah. and who can know it? And so as I trusted as a Mormon, I trusted my heart. I trusted what my heart was telling me. And mm -hmm. it was an emotional, spiritual thing. There was the physical aspect to it. Um, and now as a Christian, I know that feelings play a role sure. and a spiritual testimony is certainly important, 
but it's not the most important thing at the front of our train. Um, yeah. Somebody has used a train as an example, and, yeah. and the engine should be based on facts and, and um, things that we can document, yeah. history. You know, I look back at Mormonism, and there's, there's no history. There's or, um, no yeah. evidence. There's no the cities. There's yeah. no money, the money system that they used. And no, none coins of those coins have been found. Steel chariots. and horses, the yeah. anachronisms, all of that yeah. that is just non-existent, where for the Bible we have all of those things. And yeah. so um, as I looked at the evidence for the Bible, the copies of the, the, you know, the manuscripts that we have, yeah. The number of copies, all of that evidence, and so I was still Help support the Bible. Sure. I was still having that little, but God told you. But there's all of this evidence, yeah. and I was like, I just I couldn't figure that out until that moment. And with those two verses and what He said about the Holy Spirit would never be physical, yeah. then I could say, okay, that wasn't the Holy Spirit, and I could let go of that. Oh, great! And uh, just okay. fully trust Christ. Yeah. So then you begin reading the Bible and yes. going, th and then you actually get invited to church by a couple of people. And, yes, and tell us, I did. Just um, remind us of that. Okay, uh, one of my coworkers invited me to hear a message from a man who was a former Mormon. His name is James Walker, and he's president of Watchman Fellowship. And I went uh, to church and uh, heard the message. And as we were going through, my goal in being there was to tell my friend Tim how James would this ex-Mormon, I didn't know James at the time, but this ex-Mormon who was going to be there was going to lie and, and exaggerate and not, um, tell, the not truth. tell the truth. <laughs> and so as we're going through, and, and Tim would ask me, he goes, that's one of those places he's lying, right? That's one of those places he's exaggerating. And I would say, no, that's true. No, that's true. And so at the end um, of the hour, I was in tears and a mess because he hadn't lied, he hadn't exaggerated. And you realized he, what he yes, was saying was... And when I, I remember thinking, when I'm at the Mormon church on Sunday, none of these things sound crazy. Heavenly Mother or, um, you know, <laughs> any, any of the doctrine that is just... But in the Christian church, people were laughing. And I was like, why is that funny? What's wrong with this picture? So it was just an interesting take on it. When I walked out, I, uh, and this was in um, 2004, so it was a few years after my daughter died. Mm. But when I left, I remember thinking I had to stop rationalizing my beliefs. Mm. And so this was before the experience with the counselor. So yeah. I was still on that journey out. But up until then, you were trying to get Tim converted? and I, Well, I thought he wanted to be a Mormon. It, he was <laughs> witnessing to me and asking me questions about Mormonism, but he never debated with me or, or yeah. countered anything that I said. And so... Um, I think in reality he was trying to confirm what he had read about Mormons and that yeah. I believed what he had read. Now you mentioned uh, somewhere that uh, that he began talking to you about grace in a way he did. you had never heard before. Correct. He asked me what the Mormon view was on grace. And I And just and the Mormon view is we're saved um, by grace after, after all, all we, we can, can do. do. After and all we can it's do. A, it's a combination of grace and works. Yes. So we have to earn our way mm -hmm. and then if we don't quite make it Grace steps in, or Jesus steps Jesus in, and steps makes up in the and difference. Makes up that difference, okay. right? And so, and so he explained to me how that didn't line up with the Bible, and it just totally. I was like, "There's no way, with all that Christ did on the cross and all that He went through and experienced here, there's no way it's free. There's no way that I don't have to do something." That was my view at the and time. Your thinking was, "I've still got to do something." I still have to do something. Well, that's a Mormon mentality. It, for and sure. that's where I was yeah. at that time. And so, but I was like, it sure would be nice to not have, you know, I had read um, The Miracle of Forgiveness. And oh, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I knew from the point, from the time I read that, I thought, I'll never be in the celestial kingdom. The best I can hope for is the terrestrial, the middle kingdom. There's yeah. no way I'll be good enough um, after having read that book. So. Yeah. I was like, it would be nice if it was free and, and I could just get where I want to go without all the works, but it just, there was no making sense of all of it. Is this where that phrase, is my grace sufficient, or was this at that moment or time frame that you got that phrase? It was a little bit grace? later. It was, was in it? 2006. Um, my boss, Kelly, that I talked about last time, had invited me to Houston, okay. and I went to a church there, and there was a song they were singing. Um, is, your your okay. grace is enough. That's it. Your, okay. grace, your is grace, grace is enough. Your grace is enough. And were you starting then to realize that it isn't a combination of works and grace? I was battling that within. I I liked what I heard it's about the Christian to deal church. With that, but, but I still was 
at least partially Mormon in that, and I still do it occasionally, I think I need to do better or I need to improve. And, and I think that there's always that, but we have to know that salvation Salvation. is by grace I think alone. that's the point to me. Yes, and that was what I was missing, that it's, yes, Christians believe in works, and yes, we serve and we do things, but it has nothing to do with my salvation. Either I am secure in His hand. Yeah. Whether I do those works or not, I am secure in His hand. That's true grace. Yeah, right? That's true grace. Yeah. And so as it, at that point, I hadn't really fine-tuned that enough. My, I was trying to think of it as, I just don't have to do anything. I just trust Christ and sit back and I can sin or do whatever I want and it's all okay. And I couldn't make that make sense. Now, going through that now, have you met an, a good uh, born again Christian that has that attitude? That I'm just going to sit back and let it go? No. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? I mean, Isn't that funny how that you works? You think it's eat, drink and be merry or something. Yeah. I think that's the Mormon concept of grace. I think and, that is the concept. Cheap grace or whatever uh -huh. they want to call that. And yet I haven't met anybody, and I've met a lot of people now in Christianity, yes. and nobody has that attitude. No. If they're really saved by grace and they're... They're, it's how can I serve Jesus's and what hands. else can I do? Yeah, what and can I do? How, what else can I tell you about Jesus? And sure, and we fall short, we, we make do. mistakes, and we struggle and probably feel like we need to do more or do better. But like you say, it's not, not to be saved. Right. So you had an opportunity to start working with, and I'm not sure the sequence of things, but right. you started, uh, first of all, let's talk about Rob Sabolka. Okay. You start a meetup or you go to his Well, meetup? I went to his. He still lived in Dallas at the time, and he, so he what year started. What this have been? Um, seven, I think, 2007. 2007. So, so this is right after your 2006 with 2006 Kelly. was when I trusted Christ at that okay. church where they were singing, Your Grace is Enough. <laughs> and, and then in that next, I don't know, January, February, March, Rob and I were talking recently, and we're not sure when it started, but early yeah. in 2007, shortly after I trusted Christ, he started um, an ex-Mormon meetup in Dallas. And uh, I went to his first meetup and uh, went for a couple of years until he moved here to Utah and then you to do full-time ministry. And he, he asked me and a friend of mine, Brian, we were pretty regulars at coming, and he said, would you guys like to take over the meetup? Brian's not an ex-Mormon, but he's a very strong Christian mm. who knows the Bible. And and I knew all the stuff about Mormonism, but yeah. I wasn't really strong in the Bible. And so I was like, I'll do it if you'll do it with me, Brian. And so the two of us started a meetup in Arlington. And uh, it is still going today. Brian is no longer a part of that. He's moved on to some other ministry things. Um, but it is, it, it's part on, of Watchman Fellowship and our ministry there. It's the ministry that I work for. And, and we have the meetups at the Watchman offices okay. in Arlington, Texas. In Arlington, Texas. And James Walker's. The pres president, he is or the, the guy that I heard speaking in 2004. The one that you got mad at. <laughs> I, the one I got mad at for crumbling my world, and now I uh, actually work for him. He's my boss, and uh, he's a very nice guy. I, I've repented of my uh, hostility I'm towards sure you've him. Told him that. <laughs> yeah, he jokes about it yeah. frequently. But um, but now the meetup is held in Arlington and at the Watchman offices, and James is hosting since I've moved out here. Um, we have a good, solid core group of about 20, 25 people, and we get visitors frequently, and it's it's just an amazing experience to be able to be a part of that. Well, that's I neat. miss it. And how would it's people get follow up on that? Is there a website that they there can go is, to? There is meetup.com. Meetup.com. And you can search in your area, or you can look for a specific city. So and we have one in Watchmen. Arlington. Okay. And well, meetup. Dot com is a separate site. Okay. It, it, you can find meetups for anything. Uh, you okay. can find meetups if you own a Chihuahua. You can go to oh, a meetup okay. with other people who own Chihuahuas. I got you. They've got a ton of them, but you can look for meetups on the topic of ex Mormon um, and you'll find it. It's in Arlington. And we have another one that we uh, also started in Rowlett a few years ago, and it's run by Scott and Claudia. Um, Elliot that are friends of mine there, and mm. she's an ex-Mormon, he's a Christian, and it's on the other side of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, so it gives us okay. two options within the uh, Dallas area. That's a big city, of course. It, Dallas is huge. Ten, so. Metroplex, yeah. So tell us now, the, uh, the other thing, that, the other group that you work with is the uh, Redeemer. Redeemer Orem is a church plant here okay. in Orem, Utah, that um, I, I go to church there, it's okay. my church, and um, I'm working there, I, I serve there as kind of a liaison between, they, they get a lot of Mormon visitors, but there wasn't anybody there who didn't know um, 
what that experience was or who had gone through so that So you've transition. been invited to share since you have a If there's LDS somebody background. who comes in that's Mormon and questioning or leaving, then yeah. I can kind of walk that journey with them. What do you kind of sense or what, what do you hear from people that are coming in and visiting? Are they questioning some doctrine or practices, his, history? The essays have been huge and then opening the eyes of LDS opening the, and, and that it's on their website it makes it so much easier now yeah it's on LDS.org <laughs> it's, it's not anti right and and then the uh, the stance on um, the recent change on the um, with L the children LGBT, of uh, LGBT yeah. uh, families are coming out and questioning yes. that and wondering. that has just infuriated tons of people yeah. so one of the things that's always bothered me uh, about Mormons coming out is they have a relationship with the church yes. and then they find out the church has problems historical and doctrinal problems but they don't have a relationship with Jesus right with God or with the Bible they don't trust the Bible exactly have you dealt with that some yes and and me personally I went through both of those things um, and then also in the ministry at Watchmen, I have discipled women that are leaving Mormonism. And I'd like to start with what do you believe about the Bible? And That's start with that authority start, of yeah. the Bible because once they trust and they know the Bible is the inerrant and perfect word of God, yeah. then we can say, well, let's see what the Bible says on whatever topic you want to talk about. Yeah. Let's see what the Bible says. And so um, we tend to start there. And they always want to start with the Trinity, as did I. And I'm, I've learned that's that's not a good place to start. Yeah, but I mean, everybody it's, has a challenge with the Trinity. <laughs> it is big. And yeah. so it's, it's interesting, though, um, that the biggest concern with people, I think, is the fear of losing family and friends and the community that the they have. The social part of that it. The social part, that community that you have. And yeah. I lost all of my Mormon friends for the most part. Yeah, you know, have I have to. a, I have just a few that will speak to me, and I have one friend that actually still likes me, which is nice. <laughs> That's but, nice. Um, but the majority of my LDS friends have have just totally disassociated. You were kind of saying this, but I think it's so true that we know so much more about Mormonism now that we've left. Yes. But haven't you been amazed at what we didn't know about the Bible and about Jesus? Yes. And, and I remember teaching Old Testament, New Testament, you know, the rotation that yeah, you have in Sunday school, doctrine, yeah. all of those kinds of things. And it was Me like, too. but what I've realized is that no matter what verse we're looking at in the Bible, we went to Book of Mormon or DNC for the to explanation support it, and That's that explanation right. and for that support. So we Rather never than go to the Old Testament right. or to another verse or right. two in the New Testament. It, we, went, we know this is true because the Book of Mormon says or because DNC says yeah. it, it was never on its own. It, it, there was always that shadow of doubt about it, so we yeah. never looked to it for truth. Wow. Well, it's it's just been an amazing journey for us, and uh, I guess I, I wanted to kind of, you you explain a little bit more maybe about how people can get in touch with you or Watchmen. Is there a website there? There is. For um, the Redeemer, in, <clears throat> Redeemer yes. Forum? Yes. I should have looked up Redeemer's. <laughs> um, website before I, I came on, but it's Redeemer Orem, okay. and if you plug that in, you'll, you'll find, find it, and it. it's on North State Street is it? in North Orem, and then uh, Watchmen, our website is watchmen.org, W-A-T-C-H-M-A-N. Okay. A lot of times people put men, and it's man, <laughs> watchman.org. And uh, well, what, so those, can, what can a Mormon expect when they come to church? I mean, Mormons are very reserved, they and to, they fold uh, their arms, and... You know, what can they expect coming to a church, a Christian church? Well, it depends on the Christian church you That's go to. That's true. <laughs> uh, there's a big variety. But um, I know Redeemer has worked at um, being a little more low-key, I think, so that it's a more comfortable fit. So music, if you're in the area, yeah. the music is hymns, and, and there is some contemporary music, but not played. We don't have a full band or anything that, mm. you know, would drive people crazy. But that was a big issue for me when I first was started. Was it? Yeah. You didn't like that? I did not like the music. I had a well, really hard time. You know, it's been interesting because I think that's what we call the freedom in Christ, it to is. be able to go where you want, that you exactly. fit in. And if you like loud music, there's some loud out there. Yes, if you just like and contemporary nice music, and I love it now. Contemporary or... Uh -huh. You know, uh, and and preaching from the word, I, you know, when I talk to people love that? at Watchmen, when I was there in Arlington, I would answer the phone. I talked to people all over the country, yeah. and it was like, okay, you find somewhere that the pastor's got a Bible in hand and he is teaching from the Bible. That's what you're looking for. That's what you're looking for. You want somebody you know, who's teaching from the Did Bible. Did you hunger for that? I mean, oh my gosh! Because I, I knew so little about the Bible, it's just been yes. opening up 
constantly. When I first left, people told me I was just an, a junkie for the Bible because <laughs> I went to a Tuesday night home group, a Thursday night home group. Both of them had Bible studies. I had my Bible study for Sunday school on Sunday, and I was involved in women's ministry that did a Bible study on Wednesdays. Yeah. So, uh, and I didn't, I couldn't get enough. I know. I was just so hungry well, and thirsty for it. it opens up. It just, it's it huge. So much. Now, I notice you have some cross earrings. Yes. I love those. And I, I do too. have a cross under here, but yes. uh, what is the cross meant? I mean, as a um, Mormon, gosh. I remember the first Sunday I went to church as a Mormon. I had been given a set of earrings that um, for my baptism, somebody oh. had gifted me. And I remember a lady coming up to me and she said, honey, we don't wear crosses, you need to take those off. And well, she, had me remove, she had me oh. remove them uh, at the Mormon <laughs> church. And I remember when my well, girls- Were you a little embarrassed with that? I was, yeah. because I didn't know, but I was new and I just kind of went, okay, well, I'm new, I didn't know, I'm sorry. And I just yeah. took don't them off. Don't want to offend anybody. Don't want to offend anybody. Yeah. And, uh, and then years later, my daughters went to a vacation Bible school with the, the babysitter while I was working. And uh, it was done at a Christian church. And they came home with little wooden popsicle stick type crosses. And I was infuriated. <sighs> threw those away. I literally threw one of them across the room. I was so mad that they had brought those That's into my home. Bad. And they were little and they didn't know any better, but I was mad at the babysitter. Sure. And so now as a Christian, the cross is everything. Yeah. It, it is everything. It represents, um, it represents everything that I hold dear now, that yeah. Jesus died on the cross for my sins. He shed his blood. He everything. shed his blood there on the cross, but I think about it, and it's just so overwhelming that he would die for me and for my sins and that he knows me personally. Yeah. And everything I've ever done, everything I ever will do, but I am secure in his hand. Yeah. No one can snatch me. Yeah. from his hand and I, I just I cling to that and that shedding of the blood is exactly why there were temples wasn't it with the with the animals well there's just a minute or two left so is there something you'd like to share with people and with family friends or wow um, <laughs> I should have prepared for that I um, I just I am grateful um, for the opportunity to be here in Utah and to have yeah. so many opportunities well, to, to talk you. to people yeah. and to share and to um, just love on people. Yeah. I, I think the love of Christ is, is um, it's what we all need desperately and yeah. there's a hole in us that doesn't get filled with anything else. Yeah. Well, Renee, thanks so much for coming. And I wanted to mention that Renee has also done an interview with, uh, with Rob Sobolka and I think that's at mormoninfo.org or at meetthexmormons.com meet or dot, think, yeah. dot org. So you can look. And it's on YouTube, so you might can is, search that way. It is. Yeah. So I appreciate you coming, and what a wonderful story, and, and what a great journey. And now you're influencing others and helping those that are transitioning out. And, and there are a lot of them. There are. We're seeing more and more. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you again.